going to do your marketing and you're going to try to draw people into your ecosystem and you're going to try to get people interested in your art. And if there are, if, if you don't have a product that fits their budget, you miss out on that sale. Okay. And anyone that's been in this business for any period of time understands the socioeconomic bell curve is not a fixed entity. Okay. People move up and down that thing throughout their lives. And when you make a sale at the low end of the scale, your product, whether it's wall art or whether it's merchandise, and we'll get into that in a second, is now with that person throughout their life, okay? They might be looking at your art for the next four years, and then they're finally moved up the socioeconomic bell curve when they're ready to buy a $1,000 original, and the only reason that you're gonna get that sale is because you sold them something four years ago for $100, and every day they've seen you. Every day they're reminded of how incredible your talent is, okay? So you have to have the low end price points. You have to have the price points in between, and you have to have the price points on the high end of things, okay? This is just simple maths that they don't ever teach in art school or photography school, that and anyone that's running an e-commerce store understands you have to have them, okay? You need to have a combination of open editions, limited editions, and originals, okay? And each of these sort of build on one another. When you have open editions, that just means prints. You can, you know, you could sell a thousand of them, you could sell a million of them, you could sell two of them. They're not limited in any capacity, okay? That's open editions. Limited editions, self-explanatory, one of 10, one of 50, one of 100, one of four, okay? And then you need to have originals. Now, if you're a photographer, you can get away technically with the limited editions. If you're a photographer, an original would just be one of one. You're only ever going to sell one of those prints. When you have these three, okay, it makes it much easier to start hitting the aforementioned price points, okay, because you have open editions, which can start cheap even under $100. You have limited editions, which will be in the, you know, the 100 to 1,000 and sometimes above, and then you can have originals, which are well over 1,000. Um, you need to activate merchandise, okay? And we have a ton of flexibility on what merchandise you activate. I don't care if it's calendars or if it's coasters or if it's greeting cards or cell phone cases or sweatshirts or yoga mats or any of the above. And we have a ton of different merchandise options. And the reason that you need to activate merchandise, okay, and I get a ton of pushback on this, by the way, like merchandise. Why would I ever start selling that cheap stuff? Uh, uh, all that's going to do is lessen the quality of my art. To which I respond, tell me the last time you were in a museum that didn't have a gift shop. Go ahead, I'll wait. Tell me which major museum you've been into that doesn't have a gift shop, right? Or what major rock concert you've been to that doesn't have a merch booth. You have to have merchandise because not everybody is ready to buy wall art all the time, okay? Some small fraction are ready to buy wall art, but not everybody. So again, when you have merchandise, when you have calendars or mugs, and I'm over here looking at a bunch, but I'm not gonna grab it. You have the ability, again, to sell somebody something now, okay? that they're gonna have, maybe it's a coffee mug, and then you have a coffee mug with your art on it in their kitchen for the next three years, and then they're ready to buy wall art. Well, guess what? Now you're top of mind to these folks, okay? So you need to activate merchandise. It's absolutely critical. You need to turn on order bumps and one-click upsells. Whoever came up with these terms, I would like to drive to their house right now and slap them ac across the face with a glove and do pistols at dawn because these are the worst terms ever, but this is just what the internet calls them. Order bumps and one-click upsells. Let me try to explain this in internet parlance, and then I'll tell you real-world parlance. Um, let's say I come to Mary Ann's website there, and I put a limited edition print into my shopping cart, and before I go to the next step and enter in my credit card, a little box pops up, and it says, hey, Patrick, do you want to add a calendar to your order for $40, for $50? And I can click yes or no. If I click yes, adds it to my shopping cart, I go and check out, okay? Those are order bumps. The one-click upsells, after you've completed the transaction, I put in my credit card, my shipping information, I click buy, the transaction happens, you're redirected to a confirmation page. And the confirmation page says, you guys have all seen this, everyone's bought something online. Thanks so much for your order. Uh, we're gonna email you the shipping information. Really appreciate it. If you add in there a, do you wanna add a coffee mug or do you wanna add a small print uh, to your order for an additional $39? They're normally $79.99. And so one comes before the order, one comes after, okay? And these things will significantly increase what is called AOV, your average order value. AOV stands for average order value. Unless you think this is some new idea or this is some crazy internet thing, when's the last time somebody went to the supermarket or the electronics store or the hardware store? What happens when we're snaking through the line trying to get up to that cash register? 
on our left and on our right are magazines and books and cell phone chargers and duct tape and fly swatters and a bunch of crap that we thought we never needed. But what ends up happening is we end up buying some of that stuff, right? We're waiting in line and we go and we grab it. And the reason that happens is the easiest time to get a transaction is when that credit card is about to come out of the wallet or the purse. Okay, that is the easiest time to get a transaction. And so you find when you turn these things on, the next thing you know, you're starting to get additional orders, additional revenue. Big deal. Every artist, every photographer needs to have a commissions tab on their website. You need to be open and available to take commissions. I don't care whether you have any intention to ever take those commissions or not. The reason that you need to have that button there is because it's an additional way to get feedback on what people are willing to hand over hard-earned cash money right now for you to create for them, okay? So when you have this button on your site, you start getting ideas of new trends, new ideas that are in the market that you never would have had any idea of before. You might just catch the next greatest style or a new subject material that you can go into that a bunch of people you had no idea are actually really interested in. So you need to have that. You also need to have samples of all the various different media types that you're selling on hand. And on this case, I'm going to get my props. Hold on. Let's say on your website you sell prints and you offer, you offer a fine art paper, a textured watercolor paper. You need to have the samples on hand to be able to show it. Let's say you have canvas. You need to be able to show what a canvas looks like, the fact that it's ready to frame. It's beautiful. You need to be able to show metal and articulate what metal looks like and why metal is awesome and the fact that it's ready to hang on the wall. You need to be able to show acrylic, okay? These are all real things, real samples, real media types. And you need to be able to show wood, okay? Those are the five main media types. You guys, okay, because God blessed you with creative abilities to visualize things, can look at something and visualize it on the wall. Your buyers can't. Okay, your buyers need to understand what the real thing looks like and what the real dimensions are and the fact that it's ready to hang and what the subtle differences are between acrylic and metal. Most of you guys can't even explain that, number one. And number two, um, we don't have any idea. The consumer doesn't have any idea the differences and the subtle nuances between a fine art paper and metal and acrylic and what one might go better and why these are great for the bathroom because the steam will never ruin them. Like, if you don't have these five samples on, on hand, and you can articulate to your buyers, you're not a subject matter expert. If you're not a subject matter expert, what are you doing? This entire stack costs $180, $180. I've got the five main media types. Imagine if you had them with your images on them. Imagine if you had them anywhere you went, you could put all of them in the car with you, okay? Yeah, you know, I like your art and I realize that it's on paper, but my neighbor, my neighbor had these incredible acrylic prints and I, and I really like them. Do you know anything about that? Oh, Patrick, it's interesting that you asked that. Actually, I do. Let me go get my sample in the car. This is acrylic. It's amazing. Hold it. You can touch it. You can see how beautiful the shimmer is in the light. Oh, this is the wall that you thought you were putting it on? Let me just hang this on the wall here and you can see what you think. So when you have the samples, you open yourself up to being a subject matter expert, okay? To being able to do merchandising at any single solitary point in time and yes, making it way easier to sell print. Those are what we constitute as website best practices. You get that done, okay? Your website is now live. Your website is now set up with best practices. The next step is do your social media profiles meet best practices, okay? In today's day and age, the social media profiles, primary, primarily Instagram, secondarily, okay? Secondarily uh, on Facebook represent the credit check of whether or not you are a credible artist or a photographer with the future that's on the up and up, okay? No different than when we're contemplating buying a new product, we go and check Amazon and read the reviews. Is this a good product? Is this something I want to buy? People that get sucked into your ecosystem from your marketing or met you at a show or fair, or someone told you about them, they are going to hit your Instagram profile or your Facebook profile. And if your social media sites do not meet best practices, that's a first impression that you just lost and it makes it significantly more difficult to truly capture all the sales volume that you're gonna get out of your marketing efforts, okay? Is it gonna ruin every single solitary sale? No. But is it gonna help get a whole bunch more over the line? Yes. What we define as minimum social best practices you need to work on some design issues on your Instagram profile. You need to work on 
uh, uh, having some a minimum amount of followers. We have 250 on here, but really I like more. I, li I like 500 to 1,000. Uh, and you need to have enough posts such that you look credible, right? Like if I come to your to your social media profile, do you have a beautiful bio? Do you have followers? Do you have do you have Instagram story highlights? Do you have a bunch of posts uh, where it's showing you uh, uh, you look active? There's prints on the wall. Uh, you're showing your process. You're you're posing with buyers that just purchased your art. Uh, you look active. You look like you're actually doing something. You're a mover and shaker in the art world. If you don't have that in place, then we need to help you get that in place. And so we have services at the agency that help you get this all dialed. So let's assume this is all dialed and you've passed the minimum credibility test, okay? Next, we go onto the map and we ask, do you have what we call MVT, minimum viable traction? Now, this is a buzzword from the startup world, but what MVT essentially means is, do you have a product that the market wants, okay? Do you have a product that strangers actually want to buy? And have you sold your art to strangers? Now, a great way to audit yourself on that is, how much art have you sold in the last 12 months? If it's over a couple thousand dollars, stands to reason you probably have minimum viable traction. If you do, then guess what? You're going right into our art marketing calendar. Our art marketing calendar is shows you what to do 365 days a year, how to post on social, when to post, how to have a sale, when to have a sale, when to think about it, you're done. Let's assume you don't. Let's assume you've never sold art to anybody before, or you haven't sold that many, uh, sold a couple thousand dollars worth in the last 12 months. If the answer to the question is no, then we're gonna come down and say, do you have MVA? And MVA, remember up here, MVT, minimum viable traction, down here, MVA, minimum viable audience. That just means, do you have an audience big enough to figure out whether or not your art or photography will sell, okay? now. If you're someone that's gonna do 25 shows a year, you know, you're gonna go to the art art fairs and, and, and craft fairs and shows, then you don't need anyone on social, you don't need anyone to figure this out. You could find out just by going to all those shows. But we like to think that as long as you have 250 people on your email list and you have 250 people on a single social platform, that constitutes enough of an audience that you should be able to sell a couple thousand dollars worth of art to know whether or not you have minimum viable traction. So let's say no, you don't have that. If you don't have that, we put you, we put our customers right into lead generation. You know, we teach you how to grow social following. We teach you how to get uh, 250 emails on a list. Once that's done, okay, then we go right into a 30-day rapid test. And a 30-day rapid test, okay, because, 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 because you have price points under 100, because you have price points from 100 to 1,000, because you have price points above 1,000, because you have merchandise, limited editions, open editions, and originals, we can go on a 30-day sprint. Let me just get back to my map here. We can go on a 30-day sprint and we can run various different sales, okay? You can have a flash sale on metal prints. You can have a one-day sale on coasters. You can have a sale on originals. You can run a live art show where everything in your store is for sale. What we're attempting to do is just figure out whether or not there's enough people out there that wanna buy your art. If they do, then you're good to go. You're working the calendar. But let's assume you go through that 30 days and it's crickets. You don't sell anything. Then you don't have minimum viable traction and immediately we start teaching you to try out different subject materials, subject matter materials, okay? Different artist, artistic styles, different photographic subject material that will potentially get you right back to the 30 day test to see whether or not that will sell. And this is just a plan, it's just a map. And you know what's so interesting about it is we'll have some customers that sign up and they've been with us for two years and they've been marketing diligently and attempting to grow the business for two years. And they're just not getting the sales volume that they want. Maybe maybe they got the business up to like 16,000 or $25,000 a year and they're like, you know what? I'm happy about that $25,000 a year, but I really, my vision for this business is 100 or 150 or $200,000 a year. Okay, well what do we do in that situation? The map solves for that as well. You come right back down to this map and guess what? We have you start testing new subject matter material all the time, okay? You're still selling your existing stuff, which is generating $25,000 a year in income, but you're trying out new different subject matters and new different subject matter materials. And lest you think that this is a new idea, Pablo Picasso, when he died, had 45,000 unsold works in his inventory. 45,000. 
you know what Pablo Picasso knew that maybe he didn't get taught in art school? Is that becoming a successful artist, a photographer, is really a game of archery. What most artists and photographers do is they say, this is my arrow, okay? And this arrow represents my artistic style, what I like to create and what makes me happy and what inspires me. And then they go and they take it and they fire it at the target. And guess what? It misses the target. And then you know what that artist or photographer does? They go internal or they go external. Maybe they go internal and they say, I'm just not good enough. This is just a hobby. I should have known this was always going to be a hobby. I should have listened to my mom and just gotten a real job. Or maybe they say, art just doesn't sell out there. Or the economy is in the toilet and that's why I'm not making it. What they don't know and what Picasso did is the game of archery, you have to fire hundreds of arrows if you want to hit the bullseye. It's very difficult to hit the bullseye on that first arrow that you ever fire. And so the fact that Pablo Picasso had 45,000 unsold pieces in his inventory meant he fired a ton of arrows. Some of those arrows went right, over the, right into the backyard, right? Some of those arrows uh, 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 didn't hit the target at all. Some of them didn't hit the bullseye. They hit some of the outer rings. He did not let that slow him down. He did not let that stop him from creating and trying out these various different styles, okay? So it's critically important that you have that going on in your process. Uh, uh, and, and, and just intuitively, some of our best-selling customers are doing this all the time. They're just doing this all the time. And you're constantly looking for a style or a subject matter that might elevate your business. But that's the game. That's, that, is, that is the business plan that we get people going on. And the people that complete it, they're right into the, the art marketing calendar and everything that we offer from an educational standpoint, which is, which is quite extensive. And I can get into some of that, uh, get into some other stuff. I see your question down there, Valerie. Yeah, our, we'll get in, we'll, I'll get into your question in a second, Valerie. But I'm going to start with Angela. Her hand was up first. Uh, we'll go right into the Q&A, and then we can dip back into anything else we want to dip into, too. So go ahead, Angela. Hi. Um, so you mentioned the products. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm on Society6 and mm -hmm. not doing well. It's been really slow. I know. And I know that that's considered a marketplace. Now, yes. this is not. No. Correct? Correct. Okay. So wouldn't having all that extra inventory take away from the artwork? No, not in the slightest. Okay, not so the then slightest. what's the difference between this and Society6? So um, you get your own website with us. It's your website. It's not on any marketplace where you're just drowning in a sea of a million other products just like yours. And, and then we teach you how to market all year long and bring traffic and gain social followers and gain emails and how to market and grow the business. So that's the difference. Okay. And now do you um, usually just have like the artwork on the page? And then like you said, like um, maybe like if you click on it, oh, it's also available in this. Exactly. Rather than exactly. flooding it like Society6. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So like, if you know, if you went to if you went to somebody's page, like you can click in and there could be originals. Right. And, right. you know, you can check out on originals and then on some pages, the originals and let me get out of originals here i'll just show you there's no like one size fits all way to do it some people put all the merch in like a gift shop and then some mm -hmm. people will have them write in like the product okay. page offerings right and you'll show you'll see this here so you know somebody right. so can get this artwork is showcased first yeah and and, and okay. then you can see it on all the various different products right like if you want it on a tote bag or a throw pillow or a yoga mat or a thumb case or you know whatever the case may be okay yeah thank you yeah, thank you. Where are you on that map, by the way, Angela? Um, I'm sorry. What do you mean? So I went over that whole map, right? Um, I um, I mean, I've only made a few sales. Society Six, I've been on it maybe like six months. Mm -hmm. I've got like over a hundred pieces. Mm -hmm. I just set up a Facebook page finally, but I yeah. don't know anything to do with it. Yeah, that's okay. That's how it starts. That's how it starts. Are you doing? Are you trying to sell in person at all? In any capacity? In person, mm -hmm. no. So no, like art fairs or shows or set up a table at a brewery or any of that kind of um, stuff? I was going to do one, but like it, they took too much money out. It just wasn't worth it to me. Um, it. No. I mean, I have sold to, um, you know, in the past, people that I knew or like, mm -hmm. um, but no, I'm not out there marketing that. Got it. Should I? Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, I, I, I have a, I normally play like a, a presentation on this that does a little bit better of a job sort of explaining what we do. I kind of called an audible to go onto the map because I'm fired up about it recently. But, y y you know, 
you need to figure out whether or not you have minimum viable traction, right? Whether you whether you have a product that's going to truly sell. You'll never know on Society6. You'll never know on you know any of the marketplace sites. You're not going to find out on Etsy. You're not going to find out on eBay. You're not going to find out on. But Sachi. when you live in somewhere like Syracuse, New York, where it's like not really an art, you know, yeah, like an it's RC hard. scene. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Are you marketing regularly on Instagram? No, I'm not even on Instagram. All right, we got to fix that. Okay. We got to fix that. But yeah, you generally want to try to get those products in front of strangers as, as often as possible. And, you know, if you're in Syracuse where, you know, all winter long it's freezing too and no one's going outside. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, there's you, that's where social media comes in and it really helps you, it really help you out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. Okay, Sandra, I see your question in the chat. I'm going to get Valerie next and then I will come to you. Go ahead, Valerie. And you, uh, Valerie, you need to unmute. It's uh, Mike Icon, bo bottom left hand corner. I'll let you know when you get it. You just one click on a little microphone icon, bottom left hand corner of your little Zoom window there. Hmm. Keep trying. We'll get it. No, yep, no, no. gotcha. I got it. Now I gotcha. My mobile phone. Okay. Um, I'm on fineartamerica.com mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and I've been a premium member a few times, mm -hmm. but I just don't think I'm quite connected with them in the right way. I, I don't have, think I've made any sales, Yeah. any sales. And I do do farmer's markets and that's where my, my usual contacts are. Mm -hmm. Plus putting business cards on the bulletin board well, because I do local stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Calligraphy as well. Yeah. This, you know, the, the reason nothing's happening for you on Fine Art of America, and it's, it's not a knock on them per se, it's just you don't have a website problem. You have a marketing problem. You know, all artists and photographers like, you know, Fine Art of America is, is like us in the sense that it's, it's not a marketplace. Is Fine Art of America a marketplace? I'm I, you know, it is a marketplace. I'm confusing Fine Art of America yeah. with Fazo. Yeah. But Fine, Art America, Fine Art of America is a marketplace. You're drowning in a sea of a million others. You know, you, yeah. you, you have no control over that. You need your own art on your own website. You need to start marketing. And that's how you'll grow the business. What I thought of is uh, DeVos Hall is $1,000 for a booth for a wedding mm -hmm. expo. Mm -hmm. And I thought of just going there with my business cards, paying $6 to get in and working the room. That's not a bad way to go. It's not a bad way to go. But, right. you know, ultimately, if you want the business to grow, you have to w spend okay. regular time and consistent time marketing. I mean, it's just yeah. it's what you got to do. Yeah, you okay. got you got to get your stuff up on a website, and you you, you got to get going on it, and that's that's how you get there. Okay. Do you do tutorials at all? Oh yeah, I mean tutorials. We're one, we no. offer you a website. Two, we're essentially a postgraduate university that teaches art and photography, business and marketing all year long. We've got tutorials. Okay. We've got webinars. Um, five different Zoom sessions a week, just like this. Um, we have just a, a ton of stuff going on. What you should what you should do is go go and see a demo. The demo is where we walk you. It's like a one hour Zoom session that walks you through all the bells and whistles and the software and the plans and the packages and the marketing and everything else. And we actually are doing a couple of them this weekend. April, what 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 time are the ones this weekend? Do you just know timing wise? Yeah, uh, tomorrow will be eleven a.m. CST and mm -hmm. one p.m. CST. Yeah. So April will put a link in the chat. If you have time tomorrow, there's there's two Zoom sessions tomorrow where you can, so if you click this link, I'll might as well do it. So there's a live demo at 11 a.m. CST, and then there's a live demo at 1 p.m. CST. Oh, it's a Zoom see. just like this that walks you through the whole thing. Normally, normally we have you fill out a form on the site, and then you, you get paired up with someone on our outreach team, and then they run the session for you. But we're doing some group ones this weekend, which we don't normally do. So those are, those are great ways to experience it all, and then you can see. Do you pair up with art stores? No, we don't pair up with art stores. You get your own art store, and then we teach you how to grow it, and then you have somewhere, you know, on your business card, what have you. Like art supply stores, like Cheap Joe's. No, we don't pair up with art stores. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ari. All right, so Serena, I see your question too. I'm going to get Sandra's question first because I, I really like this question. So, Sandra, I'm going to unmute you. Um, I want to understand this. So. So the gallery closed and they just did you a super solid and said, here's everyone that's brought your work. Correct. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice of them. That got, that honestly warms the cockles in my heart that they did that for you. <laughs> yeah. The, I've been with them for a while. This actually happened a, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I gave this email list to all my galleries. I have a, seven galleries mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering, it's like, maybe I should <laughs> personally reach out. Yes. To yes. These people. Not maybe, like, not maybe. What do you say? 
I always kind of have that problem. Yeah. What yeah. We can, we can help you get over that really, really quickly, but <laughs> let me, let me, let me park on the email list for just a second and say, okay, so you're, you're in seven galleries and you, I, I'm assuming you've been in galleries for a while. Is yeah, it, yeah. is it paying your bills? Are you happy with how it's going so far? It's sort of a rhetorical question. You wouldn't be here if yeah. you weren't, but yeah. so, so far so good, but you're looking well, at I'm going really well. I just, I'm just working a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A lot of, a lot of paintings. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's a good thing. The, the, the biggest problem with, with the gallery relationship, and you know, I think there are many problems with the gallery relationship, <laughs> but the, my explanation is this. The greatest asset any artist or photographer can have is knowing who is purchasing their work. And the reason Correct. that is, is that so you can build a collector list. Now, in this book, and let me get it, and April put a link in the chat, but I wanna get this book because I wanna show it off. So Wyland is the whale guy. I don't know if you've heard of him before. He's, depending on who you talk to, he's the best selling artist in the United States, and apparently it's not even close. Um, and his book is called Don't Be a Starving Artist, right? And I, I, I read this book, when did he come out with it? I mean, I must have read this book like five years ago. He came out with it in 2016. So yeah, I was right, about close to five years. And in it, Wyland cites the importance of a collector list and how he treats these people like they're staying at the Four Seasons. I mean, he sends them a, a Christmas card every year and sometimes he'll like and comment on their social posts and he sends them personalized emails. And to Wyland, a collector is someone that will purchase an, up, an upwards of seven pieces, seven pieces plus from the artist over their lifetime. And what I've been able to see since then with my customers is having a collector list that you take care of, that you, you know, regularly get in contact with, and I know you need to do that, we'll get to that in a second. It's kind of like having a 401k, like in, in retirement. It's like guaranteed income that just pays you every single solitary month because these people love you and they will continue to buy from you for the rest of their art buying lives. And the problem with the gallery relationship is, you know, aside from this one that went out of business, they will, you, they'll, none of the galleries will ever let you know who these people are. You can never market to these people ever again. And the, the reason I don't like the gallery relationship, I don't, let me, let me put it this way. The reason I don't like the gallery relationship when it's your only relationship is a 50-50 revenue split, okay? And a situation where you do not know who is purchasing your work such that you cannot market to them so you're not building a collector list means you can have the rug pulled out from underneath you at any point in time. Moreover, moreover, the, the balance of power and the leverage is gone. You, like the galleries are nowhere near as powerful as they used to be. Now you can do the same amount of marketing on your own in a short period of time, have a business where you're, you're making way more money and you know who's purchasing your work. Now, when you're just getting started in an art business, you know, or, or, or wherever you are in your art business, I've never met a revenue source I don't like. If the galleries are paying you, that's fantastic, that's amazing. What bothers me about it is the fact that you don't have your own website, you're probably not doing your own social marketing, you're not building your own email list, you're not doing direct sales, and when you, when you don't do that, you don't know who's purchasing the work and you can never build a collector list. Like our, some of our top artists sell 70 to 80% of whatever they create to their own collectors before the rest of the work even gets to the public. And it happens again and again and again and again and again. And it's just staggering to me how important that is to the longevity of your business. No one can take it away from you when you know who those folks are. Any situation that changes, i.e. COVID hits, and the next thing you know, all of your galleries are closed. And what are you supposed to do in the meantime? If you had people to market to, you could have had a phenomenal year. Because in COVID, everyone was at home in, you know, all home decor, by which wall art falls into, was through the roof. So... That's my long term on it. In terms of how do you get started? One, you get over the paralysis and fear and then you just start sending emails. And you just say, hey, you know, I know it's been a long time. I know you've, you've bought or looked at my work in the past. Just wanted to let you know. I'm still out here. I'm still creating. Um, I'm going to be sending emails from time to time. If you have any questions, love to hear from you. Um, if you want to see my new work, I'd love to jump into a Zoom call with you and just send that. If you're super nervous about that, get your significant other to send it for you on the first time, and then you'll get over it, and then you start taking care of them, and then start marketing on the socials. And then eventually, once you start doing well enough, you take all those emails, you put them up into Facebook, Facebook creates an audience of those folks, and then you show Facebook ads to these people, so you're constantly top of mind. So that's how I would go about it. Okay, great, thank you. That was a pretty long-winded answer to like, uh, just what do I do with the email? Perfect, perfect. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I don't, you know, in, in the difficulty for someone like you is 
none of your galleries want you to put a website up and none of your galleries want you to sell direct. In fact, they might kick you out of the gallery if you do that, right? Yeah, um, that's what I'm worried about. But I mean, I have website, I have um, Instagram presence, Facebook presence, but I just think like I'm missing the marketing. <laughs> yeah. Because I have all this, this stuff in place, but I just don't, I kind of wonder about my collector list. Like, yes. It, it should be bigger. It, you know, it, 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 well, what are you talking about? It is big. You just don't know who they are. Right. Because, <laughs> because the galleries are holding it. And you know, if, if you did, if you did start selling direct and doing all the things and you have really, really good gallery relationships, I mean, you have seven of them, so that's a little bit more difficult to navigate. But what you do is you just pick the biggest one and you're like, look, I want to start doing some marketing and growing my site on my own. Um, anything that I sell direct, we'll just keep the 50, 50 rev split going. Right. <laughs> and you, and, yeah. and you say that for a year while you're gathering all the Intel and the information, and then eventually you look at it and you're like, wait a minute, I sold I sold six pieces direct and 15 through the gallery and I made more on the six pieces direct. What the heck am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. How badly did you get crushed in COVID or, or was it okay? It was fine. That's great. <laughs> they stayed open. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just, they do good, but yeah, I mean, I suppose I could ask them if they would give me the, <laughs> the emails. Oh. I've, I've just been nervous about it. Cause yeah, it's a very, very thin line. You know, oh boy, is it outright. <laughs> said yeah. you know are you selling to our collectors you know yeah don't they're but... never they're never in a million years going to give it to you i mean the, the one going out of business that was i'm surprised even the one going out of business didn't try to sell it to you at the end that just proves that they were they were extremely decent and awesome people they were yeah but they yeah. were just getting older wanted to move on to other stuff so good i for think them. that's what happens a lot with galleries sometimes good for them you should consider us us we can really help you that's what I'm thinking. You, you're a good sell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got. I'm, 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 I'm passionate about this, and I, and, and I actually like the gallery thing infuriates me because I think it's tenant farmer, and I think, you know, this industry, in, it started quite a few years ago, but it's going through its blockbuster Netflix moment, its taxi cab Uber moment, and you know, I see, I see time and time again, artists that have been with us for a couple of years, and you know, when you transition out of gallery into direct, the first year can be a little dicey, even the first year and a half. But after that, you're making so much more money and more importantly, you're building the collector list. And you know, when you when you look at the arc of your of your business based on your voice, I mean, you probably have a good 30 years of selling art left. And what you don't understand is even if you go through like a year or two of pain in the in, in between, you know, you, you, you get that collector list and they're just with you and they're just buying everything and they're commissioning you and you're not having to do anything and you keep 100% of that income. And then, you know, you start put, bolting in the prints and the limited editions and the other stuff like I showed the map and the revenue potentially your business is going to increase significantly. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, next up is Serena. So I'm at the point, Serena, I'm going to unmute you and why don't you just kind of tell me where you're, where you're at or she's still in here i don't know if she is or if she isn't so right now there you are okay i'm unmuting you serena 2000 2000 followers on instagram that's awesome sold a couple of prints not consistent yes it's a marketing problem um do you do you, do you have your own website have you gone through that whole process or no yeah and yeah. are you able to sell direct from it from time to time yeah. okay but you just wanted to move a little bit faster than it is currently yeah, it's just, it's not consistent at all. And it's very, like, people buying prints are pretty random. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, you, you need to work on consistent, regular marketing, right? It's, yeah. it's, you have to be gathering emails all year. We teach you a whole bunch of different ways to do that. You need to be emailing those emails at least once a week. We teach you how to do that. You have to be running sales when the time is right. You have to be running live art shows. Um, and you have to be doing that consistently all year. Once you start doing that, then then the business will really start ripping and going okay so like live art shows things like that yeah we we, we have like an entire like comprehensive gnarly marketing plan i realize like one of the downsides of calling an audible and going on my little map which i'm passionate about i normally have this video that walks you through what i call the the art business pyramid that talks about all the things that you need to do but you you mm -hmm. yeah I'll, we'll, we'll send it to you in a replay i got you but how much have you sold, would you say, in the last 12 months? Um, roughly around like uh, 600 in sales, probably about like 10 prints total. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, but it's more about in like the past like six months or so. It's fairly, fairly new. Yeah. Yeah. You, marketing problem for certain. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can help you too. You should definitely see a demo too. Okay. There, it's... I, I def, I, yeah, I contacted you guys. I have, I have a meeting set up for next Wednesday for the demo and everything. I just wanted to get a little bit more information. One of the one of the things too is like what we normally do. Will you send me April? Um, or no, I, I've got it. I've got it in the chat right here. I want to I want to show you this because again, normally normally I um I show this in my little presentation. But I'm gonna send you a replay that's gonna look like this and it's gonna have a bunch of links, like you know, the book will link will be in there. One cool mm -hmm. thing that I have in there for you is how to run a live art show. It's a quick start guide. And it's on this guy oh yeah, it's doing it's, it's doing it on the wrong uh, screen. Thank you, April. Hold on. Oh, you guys have too many tabs and too many browsers and too many this is and too many that's. Yeah, that's All a right. lot. Let's rewind this thing again. So I'm going to send you a replay that's going to look like this, and it's going to have the links to all the various different things. One of the things that I have in there um, is it's this guide to how to run um, live art shows, okay? This, this will be great for you. You can just read it. It explains all the why. It shows you what some people have done with you know real social followings, where they're at, um, examples of what their show looks like. Every, Agnes, every offer, uh, until now. you know, how, how they go. And then when you get down to the very bottom of it, where is it? It's down here somewhere. Send me the guide, please. Boom. Lucky. Oh, yeah. Now the Zoom's in the way, too. I'm 0 for 2 today. So table of contents, the equipment you need. You guys all have it. It's just a cell phone. Inventory and pricing, how to get paid, where to stream the show, the actual show. So you'll get that as soon as the session's over. I'll send you guys all a replay. Got you. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, Rena. All right, guys. Who else? Questions? You guys are a quiet bunch on a Friday. I think April, without that, doing our normal presentations, a lot of the context is missing because I feel like everyone's on here like, w what is this guy even talking about? Uh, you know, where are we? But does anyone else, questions? Can be about anything? Anything that we do, Art Store Friends is a business or where you are in your business or something you're struggling with or, or, or what you should be working on, next steps, things that are going well, not going well? Wow, this is just super, super quiet for a Friday. Okay, appreciate you, Duarte. Good work. Go ahead. I should probably tell people how to raise their hand too. I'll do that next. Um, but Duarte, you're up next. Go ahead. Uh, hello. Yep. Um, my name is Duarte Baltazar. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, I, I love the presentation so far. Super insightful. Uh, and I'm a digital artist. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've never took it as like plan A in my life. So okay. at the moment, I'm at a shifting uh, point where I'm really um focusing all in on art and, and i understand that marketing is the cardinal sin of most artists yes. and will do their career yeah well said so uh, uh i i also uh, understand that uh, the service that you provide has an educational value yes. that uh, probably is uh, maybe even higher than the, the platform features themselves at least for me because i'm a web designer no duarte it's for, it's for it's for everybody it's it's not it's not for, higher it's like 20 uh -huh. times higher it's like 30x higher okay okay yeah. okay okay exactly yeah. so um and, and that value that education value i believe it could be definitely life-changing yes and if you if you uh, follow it if you follow it yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. So courage and uh, audacity, consistency, etc. cetera, are well all keywords here. Well said. Uh, I also would uh, like to understand, uh, for instance, the it, uh, I like the entrepreneurial iteration, uh, like mm -hmm. testing different niches, yes. different styles. Uh, and since I'm a digital artist um, and I went, I was a bit into the crypto art world. I have some connections there. Mm -hmm. I know that this is uh, a bit unrelated, but some of the principles apply to both uh, in terms of marketing principles. Oh, 100%. Uh, and yeah, yeah so, so yeah, I, I will definitely like to, to keep in touch and know how somehow I can uh, connect uh, with, with you and connect with the platform that you that you that, that you are involved in 
because I I subscribe to this email list mm -hmm. and I've been receiving emails and I always felt tempted into participating into these conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, now I, I finally did it and I'm very glad. Uh, I also wanted to thank you for yeah me sharing so much uh, precious insights and yeah conveying them in such an eloquent way. Yeah, awesome. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you saying that. Um, yeah, you should definitely go and see a demo too. We we already have your information, so I'll have somebody reach out and just, you know, especially from a web design standpoint, I'd be curious once you get the whole tour, what you think of the platform. I think you'll be blown away. Um, a, lot awesome. of, a lot of very awesome. impressive bells and whistles. Um, I'd yeah. love to see your work though. Throw your Instagram handle in the chat if you got one. I'd love to check it out. Okay, okay sure, sure. Well, one second. Uh, uh, sorry, here. Chat, okay. So in my Instagram, uh, this is my personal Instagram, but the, the artworks that I am starting to create mm -hmm. are very connected to memories, okay? Okay. So one second. Uh, so it's like a li cinematic lifestyle um, uh, approach, the, the new collection that, I, that I'm developing. Uh, and so, um, I th did I say it to the right? Part? I don't think so. I think it, so. At the bottom of the Zoom window is like a little chat box. If you click that, it'll pop out, and you can just throw it in there. Or, or April okay. will probably just Google you and, and find it. April is my colleague. That's okay, okay, but it, it, it's it's very easy. Uh, it's uh, Balthazar dot world. So it's also very easy. Okay, April, find it and throw it in the chat, and I'll take a look. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's okay. all good. It's all good. And just out of curiosity, Duarte, what's your what, what what's your native language? Uh, Portuguese. 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 Super interesting. All right, cool. Thanks, Duarte. Yes. And I hope you guys get through. We've got big World Cup qualifying coming up. I don't know if you like soccer and football or not. Um, okay, Jag, you're up next. And you'll need to unmute, Jag. Okay. Gotcha. Um, my question is on, uh, well, one of my biggest problems is trying to figure out how to price my work. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if, yeah, I'd love to, have any love to speak insights to that. about that. Yeah, yeah, I sure do. There's there's no there's no well, step number one, the pr how you price your work is a completely reversible decision. OK, so you could let's just use some simple numbers. You could decide to price your work at a thousand dollars this week and then next mm -hmm. week drop it down to five hundred dollars and then the week after put it up to twelve hundred dollars. OK, it, it you can change your mind at any point in time and it doesn't matter. And I feel it's like cathartic a little bit to say that sometimes because it gives you the permission to experiment, right? Ultimately, right. ultimately, you're trying to figure out whether or not the work will sell, right? So okay. people, people, artists especially get like paralyzed. It's like paralysis, like on how terrified on how to set the prices and is it too high, is it too low? It doesn't matter. Once you get past it, you realize like, oh, we're raising and lowering prices all the time. So we're having sales, we're negotiating on pieces. That's all of that is totally normal. So you set the prices, you get somebody that's interested and they're like, wow, I really like your work. And, and to which Jag replies, awesome. It's all for sale. Which piece do you want? And they're going to be like, well, I'm kind of interested in this one. You're like, great. That thing's a thousand bucks. They're like, mm, that's really, that's really, really expensive more than I was ready to pay. Tell you what, I have, I have a lot of it. I'd really need to get rid of some of my work. Make me an offer and then shut up and see what happens, right? And see whether or not they're willing to make an offer and then, and then you can decide to accept or not accept. But that little exercise is hugely helpful. But practically speaking, because, you know, because I can't go and you know, uh, uh, walk into a store and look at a Jag Wonder original and then go and scan it and find out how much it's for sale on Amazon, there's really no rules. You can price it any which way you like and you can change it at any point in time. So just price it to the best of your ability and then always practice that exercise where if people are saying, I really like it, I'm interested in it, but it seems a little expensive, just say, make me an offer and then shut up. Don't say anything after that and just wait for them to come in and see what they say. Sometimes that can, that can guide your pricing as well. Okay, thank you. That's very helpful. Awesome. Thanks, Jack. And I do suffer from paralysis, price and paralysis. Oh, Jack, I, I've, had to, I, I've had customers, okay? that are selling well and they're so terrified to raise their prices that I tell them, okay, and I've done this recently, I tell them, I am going into your store tonight and I am raising the damn prices. You don't have to do anything. I will do it for you. Just leave it be. 
and I literally have to go and do it myself because they'll never do it. They are so terrified to like actually like you know it, it, it's 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 I don't even know what it is. It's like some sort of psychological trope or something. So you know if you ever need me to do that, you 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 know my email. I'll come in and raise those prices, no problem, in the middle of the night. Don't even worry. That would be. You, you, you'll be welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be happy to do it. I'd be happy to do it. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Okay, Brianna, you're up next. Go ahead, Brianna. All right. So I am a wildlife photographer. Okay. Um, just so I've done a few art markets around my local area, just mm -hmm. kind of starting out. And I'm trying to figure out really like what the the pain period is for finding that audience for gaining things to start selling mm -hmm. online you know is it a year is it a couple and i know everybody's different every yeah, market's yeah. different yeah, but yeah. just trying to kind of understand like what the first steps are for the first couple of months i guess yeah it's 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 a really really good question and like when you when you go back to the map right and were you on the whole session did you see the map i did yeah yeah so if you have the the the, the social sorted I would give myself a year trying to figure out whether or not I have MVT, okay? And I would make okay. sure that I have a minimum viable audience and I would try every hacky way to get into fairs and shows and, and be able to show the work. And then at that point in time, you make the decision whether or not you have it or not. But one thing I'm gonna show you, okay? Because I, I love this woman and I think she has such an interesting niche. And let me just pull it up. Because I've been, the shows that I've gone to, people are like breathtaking. Like I'm always told my photography is stunning, mm -hmm. but it doesn't sell. So it's great that people comment on that it looks pretty. Yes. But I want them to take it home. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. Stated, stated another way. Okay, Brianna, there is no button on the ATM machine for likes, comments, shares. Your work is beautiful. I was in a juried show, right? There's, there's no button on the ATM machine because it's not a sale. You need to sort of practice, you need to sort of practice kind of the exercise that I did with Jag, which is like, oh, wonderful. Uh, your work is so beautiful, Brianna. This work is amazing. It's stunning. Oh, wonderful. It's all for sale. Why don't you buy one? And then shut up. And I know that's really hard to do. So I, I, I know it, 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 takes, it takes some half to get there, right? Um, what I want to show you is, let me find her. So this is Carol, and I'll send you a link to the show. Yeah. And she... She just goes and photographs the wild horses. There's wild horses that still run on the BLM land in the United States. And this is her jam. She loads her car up. She lives in Colorado. She goes and drives onto this federal land and photographs the horses, right? And she does, she's run, we've run a bunch of live art shows with her. And in, in not fairness, um, so there's these wild horses. They're running on the land. The ranchers and the farmers do not like it because these mm -hmm. horses are messing up their fences and everything else. And so there's this like effort right now for the ranchers and farmers want the federal government to call the horses. Okay. So she's got kind of like a hot button topic because the horse lovers are like, you know, they're willing, they're getting the pitchforks and the, in the, in the torches, they're going to war on this. But we, 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 we think her niche is really, really interesting. And so we've run, God, maybe it's, five live art shows now with her okay and every single solitary time it's this is her studio um and you know the setups are similar right it's 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 similar imagery but she has just done so extremely well with these live art shows i cannot even begin to tell you yeah and like it, my niche i'm out in british columbia so i'm photographing humpbacks and, and orca yes um and to the point where we can almost get to the individual level of the whale so knowing that individual and who that is, so oh. that's pretty powerful, Super scientific, powerful. and I contribute to a citizen science project. Amazing. So there's a niche here. I just don't know how to get it. Yes, we could, we could certainly teach you. And I want you, um, I'm just going to send her, which one am I going to send? Oh, okay. So look at this first show. Didn't know what she was doing. Never been really on camera and done it this way. $1,800 uh, in sales. She sold six pieces, average order value, $303. Second show. Um, 49 pieces, 6,600 in sales, $136. Um, this one, she partnered up with a charity that was like rescuing one of the horses, $27,000 in sales, 119 pieces sold, average order value, 228. And then her, her, and she's done another one since this, I got to get this updated, 7,600 bucks. And so I want to send you, I'm going to send you this one because I, this, yeah, this was the fundraiser one. I'm just going to put this in the chat right now, but I'll send it to everyone after the fact watch how she just talks about it and articulates it and like goes through it and some of the questions she gets i think it'll it'll give you some insights uh into how she does this but you could totally do this and 
yeah, I mean, you've got you've got massive natural beauty. Are you, where, where are you? Are you in Vancouver? I'm on Vancouver Island. Yeah, love that Vancouver Island. Huge fan. Huge fan of the dim sum. Huge fan of the dim sum. Oh, get the best Cantonese food in that in, in that country in that spot. <laughs> I really like that. Uh, what is that little island too with the, the Granville Market? Is it Granville Island? I think it is. Maybe. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, we can definitely help you too. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And definitely watch Carol's video. It's it'll be super insightful. She's got some 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 solid techniques, and I think you could do the exact same thing and just copy the playbook, except except with the whales and the orcas, um, which would be awesome. And who doesn't love orcas? In fact, I have in upwards of one request a week from my various different children. They only have two, but they both seem to love the uh, the orca whale stuffed animals or stuffies as they call them, hot topic these days. Um, but who else, guys? Questions? And by the way. Um, for those that have never been on a Zoom, if you if you get to the bottom of the, like your little Zoom window, there's this little reaction space, and you can click it, and then click raise hand, and that lets me know if you have a question. If you do have a question, um, or we can certainly wrap it up and kick the weekend off. Okay, Duarte is back. Go ahead, Duarte. Okay, so um, my my question stands uh, in the in the fact that one of my main intentions uh, as an artist beyond the cinematic uh, lifestyle photography mm -hmm. is to develop a luxury fashion brand mm -hmm. and um, I, these will be uh, unique items so uh, the these also uh, are in the same area of art uh, in terms of uh, value perception mm -hmm. uh, and uh, regarding the, in the luxury industry, mm -hmm. I would like to know if there are some insights that also could be applicable uh, and if somehow the fashion uh, approach uh, is also yeah. compatible with the kind of teaching. Yeah, it, it, at the end of the day, like the marketing is just fundamentally it's about getting attention, right? And so, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you end up leveraging the exact same techniques that you would um, whether you're whether you're trying to sell the wall art or whether you're trying to sell luxury goods of any capacity or stripe, so it's it's the mm -hmm. exact same. It's it's the exact same really at the end of the day. I mean, clothing's a little bit different, but you know you still need email addresses. You still need a large social following. You still can run a live clothing show, no different than a live art show, right? You still need a ton of Instagram mm -hmm. followers. You still need to learn understand the mechanics of a sale. How do you tease a sale? How do you announce a sale? How do you extend a sale? How do you contemplate the discounts? Like it's it's a, it's essentially a very very similar game. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right. Solid session. I think on future sessions, I won't just call an audible. I'll actually do the map and, and go that way. But who else, guys, questions before we before we shut it down? Could be anything about anything. You could throw them in the chat or you can do the raise hand thing. So I know you have a question. Okay, you guys are a quiet bunch today. I'll take it though. Um, I feel like I've been talking for hours and hours and hours. I had a session before this too. So, all right, guys. Um, one thing I would say is, again, starting tomorrow at those two time slots, there's live demos that you can jump on to see all the bells and whistles, get a full tour of all the software, everything that we do, get all the pricing, all the packages, all the plans. Um, it really is a pretty cool interactive tour. And so those are running tomorrow at, might as well get back to my screen share and look at it. Where is that link tree? No. April, will you put it in the chat again? I gotta click on it again. Yeah. Yeah, James, you can all day long. And Sandra, this it's a crystal ball question in terms of the how much time do you devote to marketing? The it's less about it's less about um, how much time you devote to the marketing, and it's more about giving me like let's just say you have two hours a week to spend on the marketing. Well, give me those two hours a week, fifty two weeks in a row, and do that for the first time. And watch how, how much that'll change everything in your business. You know, everyone everyone says like, I've only got X amount of hours to get the marketing. Okay, give those hours, 52 hours a week or 52 weeks a year and see what happens. What happens is the business will start growing and then all of a sudden you're like, you get so encouraged, you get so enthused that you end up giving more and more time. Um, but anyway, the, the, the link April's dropping in the chat these are the these are the two live demos. You click them; it'll let you just register right for the Zoom, and you can pop on just like you did on this one, um, and you'll be able to jump in and see all the bells and whistles um, on either of those Saturday sessions if you're so inclined. So, good opportunity to do that. And yeah, that's what I would say. Any other final questions, guys, before we close it down? 
Yeah, you're welcome, James. Pleasure. It's good to see you again, too, by the way. I know you've been on a couple of these. All right, guys. I think we will leave it there. I'll send you guys the replay in a little bit. And y you know what's interesting is I think when I when you get the replay, and I'm looking for it. Hold on. It's around here somewhere. Or did I click through? You sent me that link again, didn't you? Hold on. I know April sent it to you. Hold on. I want to show you guys. So I think I think you guys should watch what I normally do on these sessions. No, that's not it. Oh, I'm just a mess. I'm ready for the weekend. Let me tell you. Okay, here it is. I've got it. So this this session here, like we'll we'll send you a replay. I want you to watch. Oh, it's not even on this one, is it, April? Well, the one we'll send you will <laughs> the one we'll send you will have it. Oh, oh it's got to be five o'clock somewhere. All right, guys, we're gonna leave it there. Um, appreciate all you guys. Hope to see you on a future session or inside or Lord knows I'll be emailing you because I email a ton. Uh, and I hope you learned something. I hope you found the session valuable. Thanks, you guys. Have a